1975 Chevrolet Monza 2 plus 2. Now Monza, I am not too familiar with that. Can you tell us a little bit about the line? Yeah, they actually made them, uh, this is the first year the, that it was produced. They made it from 75 to 1980. So they made them, it was a five year run. What's uh, your favorite thing about this car? Uh, one of the favorite things is that I've actually bought it brand new. It's my first car, so I've had it for 40 years. Been playing with it for a long time, modifying it. Um, it did come with a small block Chevy engine, a little 262. And uh, right now it, it's got a 350 in it. It's been in there. And uh, with a lot of other upgrades and mods. So it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty quick little car. It's, it's lightweight. It's got a four speed in it, posi rear. So it's, uh, it's a fun little car. Uh, it took me five years to build it. It's a 37 Chevrolet four door sedan. It has a small block Chevy in it. Uh, which is a common engine that most hot rod guys use. It's I try to stay with the original colors of the year, 37, but everything else inside is sort of new, air conditioning, power windows, power brakes. Just brought it up to what new cars are like. Excellent. Is there a story behind this car? Actually, there's a little story about this. Uh, actually, I, my wife and I were decided when we wanted to build a hot rod that we'd buy a four-door. Most guys like a two-door. But we wanted a little bit more room for our grandkids down the road a piece, so we kind of chose a four-door sedan, which is a little larger car. Could uh, you tell us a little bit about some of the specs under the hood on this car? Sure, I'd be glad to. It's a uh, straight six-cylinder engine. Most people, when they look at it, think it's some kind of a V12 or not, or so. But in reality, it's a uh, six with something called twin overhead cams, and that's where the two big covers come from that makes it look like a V12. It uses two carburetors. They're called side draft carburetors. Uh, it's not like a Corvette. It's not a racing drag strip car but it's really meant to go out and get on a highway and either race or cruise 80, 90 miles an hour and go across the country. It's more of a cruising car. When these cars first came out, really 50, the first production year was technically 49. When they first came out, this XK120 Jaguar, they named it an XK120 because right off the showroom floor, it was guaranteed to do a minimum of 120 miles an hour. And in 1950, that made it the fastest production car. You ever, uh, you ever manage to get it up to that speed? or No comment. Uh, yes, we have Glenn DiMario here from uh, St. John, Indiana. He's got an unusual car here at the cruise night tonight, and we'd like Glenn to tell us a little bit about it. What I have here is a 1968 AMC AMX. It's a early production model. It's one of the first ones made. My uncle bought the car when they first came out, and uh, I was able to restore it a little bit and get it back on the road and enjoy it. How long have you had the car, Glenn? Um, I've had the car out on the road now uh, eight years. Can you, uh, or do you know any kind of statistics, how many have made of these, or how many are on the road yet today? Um, there's not really a whole lot left. They weren't really very popular, that model, but um, I would I, I think the production was like 3,000 in 1968. And uh, has it been restored in any condition as far as re uh, the body? Is, is it all pretty good original condition? It was, yes. I just had it repainted just because of scratches because I wanted to bring it to car shows. But uh, the car had sat in the garage for like 35 years and no one touched it. It had 21,000 miles on it when I, when I got it running. Can you tell us what kind of car you have here and some of the special features that are included? Uh, it's a 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air. It was purchased uh, four years ago as a project, and uh, it just brought it to life uh, this year in February. It has a um, 454 stroke 60 over, it, which is a 468 big block. It has a uh, Edelbrock uh, twin carburetor, 750 uh, Edelbrock carburetors, 550 uh, duration lift cam, roller, rocker arms, and lifters. The works. It's a pretty fast car. It's a 10-second car. Nice, nice. And uh, this uh, this strikes me that it's kind of a labor of love. Yes, it is. It, it, a lot of love and a lot of labor went into the car. So, I mean, it took years to restore, but I, I got it where I wanted to get it to. Uh, I noticed that you chose a taxi cab theme for it. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, because of the color of the paint, and my daughter just had something she wanted to throw in the car because it looks like a cab, she says. It has a checkered flag on the side, and she said, oh, that's a checkered cab. So that's what I did. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I, I noticed you had some pictures uh, of where it started and, and where it uh, went to. So, yeah, could you tell us a little bit about the restoration process of it? Okay, the uh, car was pulled out of a swamp in Louisiana uh, four years ago. And uh, I sat for about six months. And after that, I started working on it. I, uh, I started working on the car, taking it apart, sandblasting, welding new floors in it, uh, tubbing it, putting a uh, shortened rear end in it. And then 
this is a, the power plant is what took the longest to do because uh, the love I wanted to have, I wanted to go fast, but I wanted to be able to drive it on the street. So it's a, it's a pro street car, but it's, it can, it's drivable on the street, as long as I keep the slicks off of it. It's a 1953 Studebaker hardtop. And uh, when did you uh, get this car? Uh, it was in the uh, year 2001. Uh, I bought it uh, from an estate. Uh, the gentleman that owned it lived in Algiers, Ohio. And did you have to do some work on this one when you brought it back? Uh, it, it needed a uh, mechanical restoration. It needed some paint work. It needed the interior redone. It's a work in progress. What's your favorite thing about this automobile? Well, it's a, obviously it's an attention getter, but it's also it's a, it's a fun car to drive. It's very uh, easy to handle, easy to drive, uh, very reliable for a car of that age. Uh, All right, so what can you tell me about your car? It's a 1934 original Chevy converted to a street rod. It was an original somebody's car in um, Bozeman, Montana. A guy called Vince's, Vince's Street Rods in Bozeman, Montana rebuilt it. From an original car. It's all steel, no fiberglass, no kick car. And it's, he said it was like $85,000 to build from scratch. And he had a body, so somebody without a body probably would have been more. Hmm. So, what's special about this car in particular? If I had to order one, I couldn't have ordered it any better. The color, the, the leather interior, air conditioning, power windows is something I always wanted in a street rod. Been looking for a street rod for years. But the things this one had is something that I would have wanted if I could have ordered one. All steel, power windows, air conditioning, blue color. Can you tell us a little bit about Cindy? Cindy's a 1954 Chrysler New Yorker. She's got uh, 27,000 miles on her. Uh, she came from the New York, New, New Jersey and Pennsylvania area. Uh, it's best I can tell you. She was painted before we got her. This is her one year anniversary. We adopt, my wife and I adopted her a year ago. Um, we had another one that needed a lot of work. We found this one to replace it and uh, we're just having fun with the car. Can you tell us a little bit about what Cindy has uh, under the hood or what some of her features are? Cindy's got a uh, 331 cubic inch Hemi, all original to our knowledge, still a six volt positive ground electrical system. Um, it's got power steering, power brakes, eight window air conditioning. That's uh, the back and front both have vent windows that open up. Um, original interior in the car and um, it's a good clean car. It's a TR3A. It's a Triumph. That's okay. It's a Triumph TR3A. Uh, it's a 1961 uh, it's one of the first cars that had production uh, disc brakes in the front. Uh, it's got a four-cylinder motor. It's uh, originally a tractor motor that they put in these cars. But it's a lot of fun, and as you know, I, I collect MGs and Triumph. Uh, I have a great time doing it. So if you can tell us, without being uh, really honest, how, ma how many cars do you have, Joe? Well, how many cars or how many city stickers do I have? I don't, <laughs> no, today is, today is car, Joe, just cars. Oh, no, I've probably got about, uh, about about 20 cars. They're all in various states of disrepair, and I've got about five or six of them that run real well, and I enjoy them. And those are the ones he buys the village stickers for, That's so we know correct. that. So you That's don't need, he doesn't have to buy the ones that are already in, in progress to be, be, be repaired. That's so. right. No, I enjoy them. I enjoy the cars a lot. It's a funny story about this car. I, uh, I had a Studebaker, and I traded it in for a minivan at River Oaks Chrysler Plymouth. And the guy says, we usually don't take old cars, but we'll make an exception. And then when I bought my next car, the guy said, oh, you know, I know someone that's got a Triumph, and you might be interested in it. So then I went and bought this. So it kind of all evened out in the end. All I can say, you have a lovely wife who allows you to buy and play with all those cars all the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know? My and, lovely wife yeah. can. And I know that she's sitting over there, and she probably has nothing to say about what you buy. So, no, uh, <laughs> no. I enjoy the cars, and she enjoys them as well. She loves the cruise nights. This is a great thing that you guys host every year. Every year. Roger, can you tell us a little bit about what you have here? Oh, it's a 1950 Ford Custom Deluxe. We've had it about eight years. It took six years to build. It was a frame-off restoration. Um, we tried to duplicate stock and make it all bone stock original. Frame-off, basically that means it starts as a frame and then you have to put everything back onto it? Well, the car was totally disassembled. The body was taken off the frame. Every nut and bolt was removed, uh, sandblasted, 
epoxy primer, repainted, all back to original standards. Did you do all that work yourself? Uh, with the help of some friends and my family, yes, and uh, the painting uh, was done by a friend of mine. Great. Uh, is there uh, anything special about this model year that uh, uh, people might not be aware of? Uh, not more than what you see. Just one of the things I've always been interested in, you know, the, the body design, the way the taillights go into the quarter and that, the bullets in the front, so on and so forth. All right, so what can you tell us about this car? Uh, it's a 1947 Ford. I've owned it for four years, and when I bought it, it was bone stock. We put a small block Chevy in it, a Mustang II rear end under it, a Ford 9-inch rear end in the back of it. Uh, had the interior completely rebuilt this year on it. Uh, I, I found it in a barn four years ago. So what's special about this car in particular? Well, what's special about it is the age of it, and it rides good. It, it, it crews at 100 miles an hour with no problem. You know, just don't tell the police that, you know. But it runs real good. It's smooth. Uh, I'm one for the old style cars. Larry, could you tell us a little bit about the Chevy pickup here? It's a 1938. It's a 490 pickup. Cost a whole $450. It's brand new in 1938. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I'm guessing it's been through a couple owners uh, before you got it, though, correct? Third owner. Third owner, wow, wow. Only chicken Coop in Rensselaer, Indiana. Uh, did uh, you do a lot of work on this car? Uh, no, I can't take credit for that. Uh, custom shop in Planning in Illinois did, did the work. <laughs> okay. I up, put the mechanics together. That's it. They did the paint, body work. What's the important stuff? What's under the hood here? Uh, it's got a 496, which has got a blown back in it. Uh, it's a racing engine out of Phoenix, Arizona. It's got an 871 Jimmy Blower. It's capable of a thousand horse. And how long have you had this one here? Uh, a little over 30 years. Wow, wow. <laughs> so, uh, do you like to? What do you like to do with it? Cruise around, go to shows? No, nah, it's a trailer queen. It comes basically to the shows. We don't drive it very much, but we enjoy coming out to shows and meeting people, and that's about it. Yes, uh, we're here tonight. Uh, to talk to this gentleman about his uh, car that's most unusual. You don't see a lot of these cars anymore around, and uh, give us a little update on when he got it, how long he's had it, has, has he done the restoration, or what work have you done in the car? Well, I'll tell you what. I found the car up in Bondewell, Wisconsin, in 1988, and it had originally 28,000 miles on it, and um, I was the sixth owner. I know the history behind it, and um, I haven't had to really redo uh, anything except the brakes because, uh, well, back then it wasn't so much vehicles around, so stopping wasn't so much of an issue like it is today with red light cameras. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, so I put the disc wheel brakes on the, uh, the car, so that's, otherwise everything else is original. Do you know the production numbers on this car? I mean, I'm sure I, I go to a lot of car shows and cruise nights and I don't often see one like this. Yeah, you know, it's really strange. All I know is that there's about six of them in the whole Chicagoland area. And um, um, th there were many of them made. I just don't know what really happened to them. I mean, I used to go up as far as Iola, Wisconsin, and down to uh, many, um, Indianapolis to uh, car shows, car swaps, looking for parts. And uh, you might see a basket case, <laughs> but uh, Really, you didn't see them out. Okay, this is a 1965 Chevy Corvair. They made them between 1960 and 1969. They made about a half a million of them. This is the most advanced car General Motors has ever built to the date. First car that was ever unibody. All your newer cars are made like that now. First rear engine car. First aluminum engine, first aluminum transaxle, first swing axle. This is some of the features this car has. It's an air-cooled, the only air-cooled car that they've ever made, General Motors. Guys use them in planes now, little planes. They run these. They put them in dune buggies. 
They put the Corvair engine in Volkswagen to make twice as much horsepower. It has a lot of features. They were very good cars. I wish they, I would have bought more of them. I've had three or four of them. At one time, I had seven different cars. I like to play with my toys. This is my little favor. This is a street driver. That's why it's got chips in the paints. It's not a car uh, port queen or a trailer queen. I drive this car anywhere and everywhere. Can you tell us uh, what car you brought to cruise night and a little bit about it? Uh, tonight I brought a 1969 Roadrunner Plymouth Made. Uh, I brought it uh, 10 years ago. I got out of, out of uh, Lake Havasu, uh, Arizona. It is an original California car, as they told me. It has the original black plates from that era on the car. It is known as an unmolested Roadrunner, meaning uh, it's still got all the metal from 1969. Uh, it is a very, very enjoyable car all the time I've had it. It has not broke down once. Yeah, what, what are some of the, uh, the features that it, that it has? It, it was originally a 383 car. It has a 440 in it now. It's got original four speed with the console bucket seats, which are rare to find today. Uh, they say it's priced around 41000 in today's market for this car. Okay, we have Roderick here tonight. Uh, he brought his car out to Lansing's Cruise Night, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about it, how long he had it. Did he do the work, paint it, or restore it? Or maybe uh, you can tell us a little bit about it, Roderick. Well, you know what? Actually, we, we, we brought the car pretty much like it is, and um, basically we did. We just re-chromed the engine out a little bit. As you can see, the same colors, the paint job, new wires and stuff like that. Um, it's a 406 um, crate mode in here, and um, we got this wildwood, well, wheel wood, this breaks all the way around it. That's we, the best you can buy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had the trunk did, we did the carpet, headliners, and stuff like that, but pretty much we brought the car just like it, just like it is. Have you been to our cruise nights in the past? Yes. Okay. And where do you live? Yeah, I stay at Park Forest. Park Forest? Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, this car belongs to you. Uh, was, it, was it your brother here or your friend who said? He it's, was, both of, it's both of ours. Both of yours. Huh? Yeah. Who gets to drive it more, you or him? Well, he drives that because I drive mine. Oh, so, okay. you know, when he don't feel like going out, I might come by and get it oh, okay. and, and take it out. It's a 1967 Dodge Coronet. It's a complete restoration. It started out life as a 318 automatic. And when they restored it, it uh, had a new engine, a 364 barrel put in with a big cam. And it also now has a four-speed Hurst shifter and it's been completely restored from top to bottom. How long have you had this car and how and what do you like to do with it? I got this car as a birthday present from my oldest son last year in February and what I enjoy doing with it is taking it to car shows, uh, letting people see it as well as me seeing the other uh, automobiles that people take care of and bring to the shows and uh, my wife and I go on cruises uh, once every two weeks maybe uh, on, a, on a weekend and go get some ice cream. What exactly can you tell us about the car? Um, it's a uh, Ford Gran Torino Starsky and Hutch edition, one of the uh, thousand that Ford made in 1976 in honor of the TV show. All right, and uh, what kind of engine do you have inside here? Uh, it's a 351 Windsor. All right, and uh, how many miles exactly do you have on the car? Uh, about uh, uh, 62,000. Well, that's a nice little number for a 76 especially. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Nice car, too. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about the car that you brought today? Yeah, this is a, a nine, this 1951 Henry J. I, I purchased it 17 years ago, and it's uh, and I'm the fourth owner of it. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, where they come from when they were built? Uh, Henry J. was uh, were made by Kaiser Fraser, and uh, Kaiser Fraser he was the one that made uh, uh, that built the uh, the Hoover Dam. And then in, in during World War II, he used to build the uh, like the uh, little uh, landing boats and stuff. And then after that, he decided there was a shortage in cars, so he decided he's going to go into the car building business. And he 
and he uh, started making Kaiser Frasers and from then from there he decided he's going to build an economy car and that's when he built the Henry J. Well can you tell us a little bit about the car that you brought here tonight? Yeah the car's been in my wife's family since 57. Her uncle bought it brand new in 57 and then uh, he had to get rid of it because his wife passed away about a month later and then uh, my brother-in-law had it and he passed away and so my mother-in-law gave it to us. So I done a little work on it. I painted it. Been painted one time since I have. Everything inside is original. The bumper is original. Everything that you see is original except the carpeting in the car. What exactly have you done to this car? Uh, I originally got it from Florida, stripped it all down, redid did the wiring and uh, put everything on the interior and then uh, took it to TNR Auto Body. He did the paint job and put the motor and the sheet metal work in it and they had a uh, chop as upholstery put the interior in it. All right, and what kind of engine do you have inside the car? It's a big block 496. Very nice. And uh, how long have you had the car, you said? I had it uh, three years now. Oh, very nice. And it's all custom work that you've had done to it. Yeah, it's all custom work, yes. All right, well, definitely my congratulations to you on this very nice car and everybody that had work involved in it. Well, thank you. well Robert, can you tell us a little bit about the car you have here behind us at cruise night? Yes, I can. Uh, first of all, I enjoy the car, and it is a Pontiac Silver Street, and I, I did a lot of work to it. I cleaned it up, polished it, uh, rebuilt the front end. Uh, we rebuilt the rear end of it, and we kept it all original, of course. We painted it and uh, put new wheels on it, tires, and I polished it every Wednesday. Every Wednesday is polish day. And uh, my wife is very supportive of me, she is. And I enjoy doing it, and I'm glad to be here on cruise night. It's a nice night, a lot of nice people. I'm just having a wonderful time. James, can you tell us a little bit about the car that you have here at cruise night? This is a 1960 Ford Starliner. It's got a big block in it. It's a matching numbered car. It's not restored. It's all original, and the car has 123,000 miles on it. How long have you had this car? I picked it up about two years ago. Uh, have you always been a big car guy? Uh, oh, yeah, I've been a Ford man all my life. Okay. Are, uh, are you planning on doing any work to this car? Or are you pretty much leaving it the way it is? Well, this car is going to stay the way it is. I've got four other Fords at home that are all redone, and I show those cars. This is going to be original. All right, I'm here with Mr. Eric Sherman and his 71 Chevy Caprice. Uh, what exactly can you tell me about the car? Well, this car is pretty unique in that it was a General Motors brass hat car in 1971. This was actually the uh, uh, plant manager's car in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, the uh, plant that uh, made Caprices, Impalas, Bel Airs, and Biscaynes. So uh, the original owner on this car worked for the, uh, worked for the Chevrolet plant, and when the, uh, uh, it came up for sale, he purchased it in 71 and so the original owner had it from 1971 until 2008. I, uh, um, I bought the car from the second owner who had it from 2008 till just this January. So I've had this car for about uh, seven months now. All right, and, uh, have you done anything special with the car, redone the interior, anything like that? Not at all. Uh, this car is an original 41,000 mile car. And what's very, very uh, interesting about it is rarely do you see a car this loaded. This has got every option box checked on it. So it's got w power windows, locks, tilt wheel, cruise control, power seats, Comfortron air conditioning, AM FM 8 track, posi traction, four, the 454 big block. So uh, it's, uh, it's certainly um, uh, an interesting car to have. We're here with Dan. Can you tell us a little bit about the vehicle behind us here? Uh, yeah, this is a 66 Dodge A100 van. Uh, we bought this a uh, couple years back north of Grand Rapids. And uh, my brother and I went to pick it up. And uh, we got stuck in the, the farmer's field. This was behind a barn. We pulled it out on the trailer and, and drove it home. And it's kind of been sitting in my garage for a while. And just recently got started on trying to get it back on the street. So this is actually the second time I've only driven it. So it was in uh, probably pretty bad condition when you got... It was pretty rough. Yeah, it was pretty rough when we bought it. I mean, there were no seats in it. Those seats came with it, but those aren't the original van seats. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was really, really rusty. So we had to replace a lot of panels and a lot of metal on it. 
So a vehicle like this, is this one that you've kind of always wanted or, or did you see it and go, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good idea? You know, it's kind of a funny story. I, I, I've always liked these vans, but, uh, you know, I saw a low bid on eBay and uh, I just went with it and put a max bid on it and I ended up buying it. So kind of like one of the worst purchases I've ever made, I, I tell everybody. Do you uh, care to admit what the uh, selling price was or not really? Uh, not really. It was cheap, but uh, I've, got, uh, I've got quite a bit invested into it now to get to this stage. So, But I did all the work myself, so that saved me some money. What would you say is the most special thing about this vehicle? Uh, I'd have to say it's probably the stained glass windows in the back of the van. So it's, uh, it's really unique. It's one of the things that caught my eye on the, on the pictures when I was buying it. Hi, we're here with Jerry, and uh, could you tell us uh, what car we're sitting in here? And thanks again for letting me uh, join you inside the car here. It's quite all right. It's my pleasure. It's a 1923 Ford Model T. It's got a 67 Corvette engine in it. So it was built in 1977. Cool. Uh, did, you, uh, did you build it? or? Yeah, we built it ourselves. I did everything but the paint and the upholstery. Cool. Uh, what What's your favorite thing about this car? Uh, just that the looks that it garners. It seems like it's a crowd attraction all the time. Yeah, it certainly is.